I have a lot of cichlids. A lot of you know that, for those of you that have been following my channel for quite some time, you know that I keep a lot of different types of cichlids. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a rare cichlid that I recently got, well, a couple months ago, that I have not shared with you guys yet, and I'm gonna do so on today's video. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now, as I shared, I do have a lot of cichlids. I have large cichlids, small cichlids, medium-sized cichlids, colorful cichlids, kind of drab looking cichlids, African, East African, West African, South American, kind of fish from all over. But I got a new fish from Central America that is pretty rare in the hobby. It's a fish that I've never seen before in stores. I haven't seen anyone keeping them before personally. I saw some in one of my favorite local fish stores and I had to grab some and I'm gonna share with you today. That fish is the topaz cichlid. Now the topaz cichlid does have a more scientific name which I cannot pronounce, so I will put it down here somewhere or down in the description. Um, but basically the topaz cichlid, it's uh, similar to the convict cichlid, but much more colorful. Brilliant blue eyes, sometimes they're called like the blue-eyed cichlid, topaz blue. Um, sometimes it's called the blue-eyed cichlid. Um, very beautiful, brilliant colors on this fish, and uh, it behaves very much like the, like the convict cichlid. Now, it is endangered because of its natural habitat in Central America, um, where there is um, issues with deforestation and all kinds of things that happen down there. So they are not uh, readily available in the wild, obviously, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to keep the fish. this fish. I wanted to get my hands on this fish, see if I can um, learn more about it, maybe do some breeding and distribute it uh, throughout to some other friends here in the hobby. Now these fish are found in Central America. As I shared, they're on the Atlantic side, I believe, of uh, Panama and Costa Rica, and uh, they have been endangered due to like agriculture, pollution, etc. cetera. Um, as far as characteristics, they're not a very large fish. They probably about three to four inches kind of tops as far as uh, the males. Um, but they are, they do punch above their weight, meaning that they can hold their own with other fish that are larger than them. So they can be a little bit on the aggressive side. So if you're looking at keeping these, um, you might wanna do like a species only tank or just have a pair or have them with other fish that won't get bullied or beat up too much or that are very different than them um, so that they're not gonna have issues. I happen to have mine with a small school of Corydoras and what I've found is they leave the Corydoras alone except for the little nesting area. They leave them alone because it's such a different type of fish that they don't really see it as a threat or anything and there's also Placostomus in there which they leave alone as well. But any other fish, um, I could imagine them chasing and going after um, because they can be pretty aggressive and they do chase each other around a little bit too. Now I have four of them. Um, I bought four uh, hoping that I would have a mixture of males and females and let them pair up. Um, haven't been able to observe them long enough to see them pair because I had them in a smaller aquarium. I had them a 20 gallon tank originally just during the whole quarantine process and then I moved them into a 40 breeder recently. Now, as you can see from some of the B-roll that I'm putting up, uh, the coloration is beautiful. Kind of some yellowy golds uh, with some blue hues on their um, on their body, some dark spots as well, and those brilliant blue eyes, which are just really cool. I'm kind of a sucker for any fish that has blue eyes, and this happens to be one of them. Now, as far as their diet, they're omnivores, uh, meaning that they'll eat pretty much anything. Um, I have read that they could be pretty finicky as far as eating, but I have not experienced that at all. They Basically, when I come into this room and I walk in front of this tank, at first they were pretty shy until they figured out that I was a giver of food. So once they figured out that when I came in, they got to eat, they will come right up to the front of the tank and just wait for me to put any kind of food in there. They will eat pretty much anything. So flake food, pellet food, frozen food, they've eaten it all, all different flavors and variants. So um, my experience so far these past couple of months is they'll eat anything um, and being omnivores, that does make it easy. But for some of you, depending on where your fish come from, they might be a little bit finicky as far as what they decide to eat. I do wanna interrupt briefly to thank the sponsor of this video which is me, I've done this before, I know it's pretty silly. But anyway, just wanna put in a quick little plug here for those of you that have been asking me for more merchandise. Um, there is a link down below. In fact, I'm wearing one of the shirts here. They now come in tank tops, so you can get tank tops, hoodies, hats, whatever you want. But for those of you that have been asking me for different colors and different variants and cuts of, of shirts and clothing, that's where it is, it's down below. So go ahead and check out my link. 
Now in my research, I did also read that they um, do behave similar to convicts as far as their breeding behavior and also their proliferation as far as how many fish they uh, produce during their breeding process. So um, if you do get your hands on some and you are successful in breeding them, uh, just keep in mind that you might be dealing with dozens and dozens of uh, of these fish that you'll have to uh, you know find homes for. But that's a good thing, obviously, because they're endangered. We want to get them out in the hobby. So I don't have a whole lot of information on them as far as my experience. Um, obviously, I've done my research and read stuff online. But as far as uh, my own personal keeping, I've only had them for a couple of months. I don't have a lot of experience as far as things that I've observed or tested or anything like that. But just wanted to share these beautiful fish that I have here because none of you have seen them on my channel. And I was just sitting here the other day observing them and thought, you know what, I should make a video and share it with all of you. Now, if you've kept this fish or if you know someone that's kept this fish before, if you've bred them or anything, please comment down below because I would love to read your experiences about these fish and learn more about them because I can learn obviously from all of you as well. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.